Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. In this video we're going to look at the second half of the lesson to do with the menstrual cycle. In particular we're going to focus on how hormone levels can be artificially manipulated uh, to help fertility or to be used as a form of contraception. But just before we do that let's take a very very brief look at how those hormone levels vary naturally throughout the course of the month. At the start of the menstrual cycle, which is 28 days long, roughly a month, the levels of FSH produced by the pituitary gland start to increase. This stimulates an egg cell in the ovaries to start maturing, ready for release later in the month, and it also stimulates the ovaries to start producing larger amounts of oestrogen. The increasing oestrogen levels cause the lining of the uterus to start to thicken, and they also cause the levels of FSH to fall. Finally, just before the middle of the menstrual cycle, the oestrogen levels get so high that they stimulate the pituitary gland again to start producing LH, luteinizing hormone. And that causes the egg which has matured to be released from the ovary. There are two more things which you need to be aware of though. Firstly, oral contraceptives. Because this whole process is controlled by hormones, we can actually use hormones to make sure that a woman isn't fertile so that she isn't able to get pregnant. And that's what the contraceptive pill does. Uh, early versions of the pill contain large amounts of oestrogen and that tended to make women nauseous, tended to make them ill, there were complications with things like gallstones. So more modern ones, they contain much lower levels of oestrogen and they also contain another hormone called progesterone. What both of these do is they stop the FSH from stimulating uh, follicles in the ovaries and they stop them producing mature egg cells. It basically stops the egg cells maturing so that they can't be released and so that they can't be fertilized. Now the flip side of that is fertility treatments. Fertility treatments are administered when a woman is trying to get pregnant and having difficulty doing it naturally. So there's a couple of things which we can do. Firstly, and the most simple thing to do, is administer a treatment of FSH. And that FSH causes more egg cells to mature in one of the ovaries, just the same as it would here. So you're looking at exactly the same sort of thing as we've got going on here, but higher levels of FSH. Now, carefully administered, that can mean that just one additional egg cell is released but it can be tricky to get the levels right. So sometimes under that kind of treatment, women can release quite a lot of egg cells and all of them can be fertilized. Uh, men produce a large number of sperm, so any egg cells which are there and available do tend to be fertilized. So if a woman releases four or five, then all of those can be fertilized and she can end up having a large number of children. That of course isn't the most desirable situation for most people because it's difficult to carry that number of babies to full term. So more commonly what tends to be done in fertility treatment is a woman is given FSH and LH, given increased amounts of those, and she will then release larger numbers of eggs, exactly as was happening when she was just getting that treatment that I mentioned a moment ago, but the eggs are then collected and they're fertilised outside of the human body. They're fertilised in a petri dish, it's known as in vitro fertilisation or IVF treatment, Sometimes it's also referred to as test tube babies, although it's actually a petri dish which it takes place in. The eggs are fertilized with sperm from the father, so it's still genetically the offspring of the mother and the father, and they'll normally fertilize a few of them. And any which are looking healthy and developing into healthy embryos, those are then selected, and normally one or two are then reimplanted into the uterus where they can grow to full term just as they normally would. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and if this video was useful to you, please use the buttons below to like, subscribe, or share it with anyone else you think could also use a little help. Thanks for watching.